وفانا بحسنه حيانا نور الهدى وفانا السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته <coughs> My dear viewers Alhamdulillah we are going to resume our tafsir of Surah An-Naba from verse number 13 أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وجعلنا سراجا وحاجا and we have made therein a shining lamp صدق الله العظيم my dear viewers Alhamdulillah in the previous lesson we concluded by discussing the tafsir the commentary of verse number 12 وبنينا in which Allah Almighty made mention that He has built above us seven heavens. Now, as we know that Allah Almighty, when He creates something, it is flawless. It has no deficiency. But at the same time, what He creates represents beauty. So Allah Almighty has adorned the sky with stars, with the moon, with the sun. And many a times at night time when we look up, we are astounded. We are amazed at the beauty that is on display. There are so many stars that intensify the beauty of the sky. Now Allah Almighty is saying that he has created the seven heavens over us but at the same time these, this heaven that is above us is beautified with a sun. And if we were to study the sun there are so many fawaid benefits attached to the sun. Number one it gives us light, it removes the darkness. Number two, it provides heat. You can go to Europe and ask many, many people that what do they like about Australia? And they will say that it is the weather in Australia. You have warm days. They crave for a day in which they can go out and enjoy the sun. They may have a couple of months in the entire year. Alhamdulillah, we have a very balanced weather system. So we have uh, the beautiful sun over above us, over and above us. And the heat of the sun allows us to be in a state of happiness. When I was traveling through Europe, I found many, many people and it was winter. They were struggling to bring a smile on their face very gloomy and I asked a few people when I went to people's houses and they said that the reason is the weather has an impact upon your personality and because the weather is gloomy the people are gloomy but he said that if you come to this country in summer you will find that people are smiling and they are greeted so Allah Almighty has created the sun for heat, for light, and then the rays, they are very, very beneficial for the health of a human body. As we know nowadays that men and women, they may go for a blood, blood um, inspection, they'll go for a blood sample, and they will find that they have vitamin D deficiency. So what does the doctor say? The doctor will say you need to sit in the sun or get the light and the heat of the sun. Try to be in the sun before 9.30 a.m. before the Salatul Zuha, the forenoon prayer. Or try to be in the sun after 4.30. Meaning that in the rays of the sun, there is vitamin D for us. And there are many other benefits, health benefits for human beings. But what we learn from this verse is that Allah Almighty has created a sun and has placed this sun in the sky that is above us. 
and it basically allows the sky to display beauty not only the sun but the moon and the stars i'm going to share something uh, that i experienced when i went for hajj um, two years ago when we went for hajj we experienced that the temperature in mecca was cooler than medina the temperature in mecca was cooler than medina so when we were in Medina al Munawwara, the city of Nabi Akareem Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I expressed this to a local person. I said that indeed there is solace of a different kind in Medina al Munawwara. The environment is very different than Makkah al Mukarramah. But this year I have experienced that the weather in Makkah is cooler. And this local brother says something that I was taken back. He said that the temperature in Medina is hotter because there are two suns here. One sun is in the sky and the second sun is buried in the ground. And he pointed to the grave of Nabi Akareem Muhammad sallallahu And he said that's why the temperature in Mecca is cooler. And the temperature is hotter in Medina al Munawwara because Nabi Akareem Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is in Medina al Munawwara. Anyway, Allah Almighty says, وَأَنزَلْنَا وَجَعَلْنَا سِرَاجًا وَهَاجًا And we have made therein a shining lamp. Verse number 14, وَأَنزَلْنَا مِنَ الْمُعْصِرَاتِ مَاءً ثَجَّاجًا And we have sent down from the rainy clouds abundant water. Another phenomena that we experience in our life multiple times is that when we look up, we find that there are clouds that are carrying water. And by the order of Allah Almighty, they shower that water upon designated areas. And keep in mind that these verses from, from, from verse number 6 to 16, Allah Almighty is mentioning things that will allow you and me to recognize that there is a day of judgment. And in these verses, Allah Almighty makes mention of the rains, the water dropping from above. Because we see that there is dry land, barren land. When the water hits the ground, after some time we see life. We see that there is things that are growing out of the ground. Likewise, Allah Almighty will bring us back to life again once we are placed in the grave. But in this lesson, I would like to make mention of certain aspects pertaining to water. Allah Almighty makes mention of water that it brings life to the barren ground. In Surah Anbiya, Surah number 21, verse number 30, Allah Almighty says, وَجَعَلْنَا مِنَ الْمَاءِ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ حَيِّ That from water we have given life to every living thing. From water we have given life to every living thing. As we have come to know that the human body is made up with water, 80% is water. And we can't survive without water. Hazrat Abu Dhar Ghifari radiallahu ta'ala said that when I came to Makkah to Al-Mukarrama, I stayed in Makkah to Al-Mukarrama and I survived on Zamzam. I know people in Brisbane that have survived on a water diet. They have only drank water day, night. That's it. No solids have gone into their body. And as we know that when we are fasting, and the country in which we are fasting is very warm. The first thing that we open our fast with is with water. And uh, the scholars have said it is preferred that a person drink water that is cool. Not cold, but cool in temperature. Because when he will drink this water, 
that is the source of life, without thinking, without activating his intellect, he will say, Alhamdulillah. You can try that. Without even thinking, when cool water goes inside, a person says, Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. So, the source of life is water for every living being. And Allah Almighty allows it to drop from above. And then Allah Almighty allows this water to be preserved for the drinking of mankind and the animal kingdom. <coughs> what I would like to make mention at this point is that in Surah Takasur, Surah 102, last verse, verse number 8, Allah Almighty says, Summa letus alunna yawma idhin anin na'im. That on the day of judgment, a person is going to be questioned about the grace, about the ni'mat, about the bounty. We have realized that water is a bounty. And we're going to be questioned how we have acquired the water. And over and above that, we are going to be questioned how we have used that water. We should not squander, we should not waste water. Indeed, we have ample water, but still we should not waste water. There is a profound statement of Nabi Akari Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa addressing a person that is making wudu beside a flowing river. Now, if a person is making wudu or a person is taking a bath beside a flowing river, there is no possibility of wasting water. Because the water drops back into the river, the flowing river. But Nabi Akri Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, wa iyyaka wa sarf, iyyaka wa sarf, wa in kunta ala naharin jarin. Protect yourself from wasting water even if you are sitting beside a flowing river. Subhanallah. This profound statement forces you and me to think. What is the deep message in this statement? What is the meaning between the two lines? And after ample thought, after giving it due consideration, we come to this realization that Nabi Akari Muhammad وسلم, is addressing the habits of a human being. If a person sits beside a flowing river and makes wudu or takes a bath, there is not, there's not, there's not a possibility of wasting water. But what will happen is he will develop a habit of wasting water. And when he returns back home, where there is limited water, he may practice the same habit that he has developed. So wherever we may be, we need to habituate ourselves to a style where we are not wasting the water. This is very, very important. First and foremost, I address myself and then all those that are listening, that we should think, how much water are we wasting? Or how much water are we using when taking a bath? And how much water are we using when making wudu? And how much water are we using when brushing our teeth? Many a times we are brushing our teeth and the tap is flowing. We are going to be questioned about each droplet. We are going to be questioned about each bounty and water is a bounty. I have brought this vessel, so you can see to, today in this lesson. You will say, you may be thinking, what is this vessel? I purchased this from the Holy Land, from, uh, or a person, he gave this to me as a gift, who went to the Holy Land. Allah Rabbul Lizzat reward him. This is known as a mud. This vessel is known as a mud. And you will be surprised to know that Nabi Akrima Masasalam used to use one mud to make wudu. So, whatever water this vessel can contain, the Nabi of Allah used to make wudu with that much water. Ajeeb. And it is very little. And as we know that when we're making wudu, most probably we are washing our face with this much water. The Nabi of Allah used to perform a perfect wudu. 
a complete wudu. No body part was left dry. And he used to wash it three times. Because washing each body part in wudu three times is the sunnah of Nabi Akri Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So he will not miss out on that sunnah. Despite all that, this is how much water he needed to make one wudu. And let me share something else with you that will make you more surprised. The Nabi of Allah used to make ghusl with a sa'a, that is the name of the vessel or the container. And the scholars have said four of these is one sa'a. Four of these muds is one sa'a. So with one sa'a, the Nabi of Allah used to make an entire ghusl where he used to wash from top to bottom, from side to side. Only that person can make wudu with this and ghusl with a sa'a who appreciates this bounty. Just like we don't waste our wealth, they did not waste water. So we need to look at water as the source of life and appreciate clean, drinking, cool water readily available. I have read in the books that once Harun Rashid was traveling with the entourage. Somehow, by the will of Allah Almighty, he was left behind or the entourage missed out upon Harun Rashid. They did not know where he was. So Harun Rashid was traveling alone through, through the jungle, through an area that he was not very, uh, very he, that, that environment was not known to him. And in the distance, he found that there was a lamp. And he was very, very thirsty because he had not had water for some time. So he went uh, to that Roshni, to that light. And he found that there was a person there. That person recognized Harun Rashid as a king. And he knew that Harun Rashid is lost. Harun Rashid said to him that I am very, very thirsty. Can you bring me a glass of water? So this person went and he brought a glass of water. But at the same time, he was a very wise person. And he knew that this opportunity does not come about very often. So he wanted to avail from this and give some sabak, lesson to Harun Rashid. So the water was in the container. He was to present it to Harun Rashid and he paused. And he said to Harun Rashid that right now you are so thirsty. If I was to put a value to this glass of water, or if you were to put a value to this glass of water, what will the value be? What are you ready to give? for a glass of water. So Harun Rashid thought about it and he said that I am ready to give half my kingdom because I, I will only avail from my kingdom if I survive and if I don't drink water now, I'm not going to survive. I'm going to die due to thirst. So I'm ready to give half my kingdom. So the person gave the glass of water to Harun Rashid. He drank the water. And after drinking the water, the person said that, can I ask you another question? He says, yes. He said, this water that has made it inside you, if for some reason it did not exit your body, how much would you pay? Or what value will you put for the exiting of this water from your body? And Harun Rashid thought about it, that if the water does not exit my body, I will be in immense pain. He said, I'm ready to give half my kingdom for the water to exit my body. So this old man said to Harun Rashid, the dakhul and the khuruj, the entry of this water and the exit of this water, that is one glass of water, the value of it determined by you is your entire kingdom. Your entire kingdom basically has been evaluated by you and it is one glass of water, the entry and the exit. So this is a profound lesson. There's a profound lesson in this. How many glasses of water do we drink? And without even thinking, 
we find a little bit of pressure, we feel a little bit of pressure and we go to the bathroom and the water exits. Think about it if there was no water to drink or there was water to drink but we developed a condition where the water did not exit from the body. I came to know of a person in Pakistan when I was studying who was a family member that uh, could not pass his urine and he used to be in, a, in intense pain and they used to take him to the hospital and then somehow they used to allow the water to exit. So my dear brothers and sisters and children, whenever using water, be mindful that this is the source of life. Whenever using water, clean water, thank Allah Almighty. Think about this. Think about this. Use little water to make wudu, to take a bath. And please, when brushing your teeth, turn off the tap when the water is not needed. <coughs> My dear brothers and sisters, viewers, inshallah, we'll move to the next verse. And that is verse number 15. That we may produce therewith corn and vegetation. Allah Almighty allows the sky to be adorned with the stars, with the moon and with the lamp, the shining lamp, the sun. Then Allah Almighty allows the water to fall from the sky, that is the source of life, and allows the water to do its work, to bring the dead back to life again, to allow the barren land to be beneficial for those that are walking upon it. Now Allah Almighty says, لِنُخْرِجَ بِهِ حَبًّا وَنَبَاتًا That when the rain falls, then the result of it is that we will find corn and vegetation. So the water drops and the result of that is that the land will produce food for the human body. Food for the human body. I would like you to think from a different dimension. When the rain falls, Allah Almighty says it produces corn and vegetation, yani food. We consume the food and we maintain our physical health. Likewise, there has been a different kind of rain that fell from the sky for 23 long years, 1400 years ago, more or less, that is known as the Quran. That was a rain, it fell from above. It was spiritual rain. It was rain. It was the source of life, the true source of life for humanity. That did not only provide physical health, but provided health for the soul. If a person does not benefit from the water, he will miss out on the food for the body. And if a person doesn't benefit from the rain that fell for 23 long years, he will miss out on the food for the soul. The body will die without food. The soul will die without food. We need to provide food for the body and we need to provide food for the soul. The food for the body is habban wa nabata and many other items that we know of and the food for the soul is the 23 years of reigning of the kalam of Allah Almighty that starts with Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen and finishes on Min al Jinnati wa Nas every word, every letter, every ayat, every ruku, every juz is spiritual food for the body so do not deprive yourself of physical food and do not provide your, uh, de devoid yourself of spiritual food. Next verse, وَجَنَّاتٍ alfafa, And gardens of thick growth, subhanAllah. When the rains fall, we find that everything becomes lush green. 
lush green. So everything starts to blossom. Everything starts to blossom. And everything starts to grow from strength to strength. Likewise, the more we take of the rain, the more the garden will be dense. If there's a covering on the garden and the rain falls, it will be deprived of the rain. It will not be lush green. Likewise, if we place an umbrella of negligence over and above us, if we place a covering of heedlessness, a covering of vice and sin, this rain will fall, but we will come out dry. We will not grow from strength to strength. We need to remove all the obstacles and all the coverings that do not allow the spiritual rain to drop upon us. And the more we take this spiritual rain and remove these coverings and these obstacles, these hindrances, the more we will grow from strength to strength. Just like the more rain that falls on the garden, al-fafa, it is the plural of lafif, meaning dense, gardens that are dense in growth. The more we take from the kalam of Allah Almighty, the more we allow the kalam to regulate, dictate our life, our movement, our days, our nights, the more we will blossom, the more we will grow in strength. We'll grow from strength to strength. So keep that in mind. وَجَنَّاتٍ alfafa. The next verse. إِنَّ يَوْمَ الْفَصْلِ كَانَ مِيقَاتًا This is the climax of the set of verses that we have been studying. Verily the day of decision is a fixed time. Subhanallah. Allah Almighty makes mention of the Jibal, the mountains. Allah Almighty makes mention of the earth. Allah Almighty makes mention that he has created living beings in, in pairs and he has created the sleep, the night that is conducive to the sleep. Allah Almighty has created the sky, the sun, the heat of the sun, the light of the sun. Allah has created the clouds that carry water. Allah Almighty has provided for us habban wa nabata, corn and vegetation, wa jannatin alfafa and dense, lush green gardens. But all this leads to one thing. The climax is inna yawm al-fasli kana miqata that the day of decision is at a fixed time. What Allah Almighty is saying, all this that you see on a daily basis that is visible to young and old, male and female, it should turn your attention to the day that is fixed by Allah Almighty, the day where Allah Almighty is going to make the decision. Allah Almighty has made this domain and has beautified it and has placed many things in this that benefit one another. So the vegetation, it benefits the livestock. The livestock, they will graze in the fields. So the vegetation, the green food that comes from the earth, the livestock will graze upon it. So that's where they will sacrifice themselves for the livestock. And then the livestock, they will sacrifice themselves or themselves for the human being. We need to sacrifice ourselves as well. And we need to sacrifice ourselves. This is the chain. We need to sacrifice ourselves to attain the pleasure of Allah Almighty. There's going to be a day where Allah Almighty is going to make that decision. I would like to draw your attention to the verse of Surah Teen, Surah 95, last verse. But we will study verse number 7 and 8. فَمَا يُكَذِّبُكَ بَعْدُ بِالدِّينَ أَلَيْسَ اللَّهُ بِأَحْكَمِ الْحَاكِمِينَ what has caused you to deny Yawmul Fasl? What has caused you to deny Yawmul Fasl? Ba'du Biddin, the day of judgment. Alaysa Allahu bi ahkamil hakimin. Is Allah not the best judge? In this world we know that many a times a person is wrong done. 
He will go to a court. Sometimes the court system is corrupt. So he will never receive justice. Or he may go to a court that is not corrupt, but the barrister of the wrongdoer has the gift of the gap. He's very eloquent in presenting the case. He may deceive the judge and the judge will give a ruling that is incorrect. Not intentionally, but unintentionally. Many a times we find one person that has done a lot of good, but we don't see the reward of the good that he has done. And, one, and sometimes we see a person has done a lot of wrong, but he gets away with murder. There has to be a day where the perpetrator of the crime is truly punished for the crime. The doer of good is truly rewarded for the good. And true justice is established. That's why Allah Almighty says, is Allah not the best of judges? And very swift in judgment. We have run out of time. Inshallah in the next lesson, we will speak about different aspects pertaining to this verse, inna yawm al-fasli kana miqata, a recap of what, of, of what we have studied today. We started by speaking about the sun. We made mention that there are many benefits attached with the sun. I gave you the story, my own personal story, where the person said that there are two suns in Medina tul Munawwara, and that's why it is hotter in Medina than Mecca, he pointed to the grave of Nabi Akareem Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Then we made mention that Allah Almighty in verse number 14 uh, speaks about the clouds and the rain. And we made mention that uh, water is the source of life as made mention in verse number, uh, verse number 30, Surah number 21, Surah Anbiya. So we need to be very mindful when using water. I gave you the story of Harun Rashid. I gave you the story of Harun Rashid, where basically Harun Rashid by himself uh, evaluated uh, water by saying that this water, drinking it and allowing the water to exit from the body is equivalent to my entire kingdom. Then I showed you this vessel. This is the vessel by which the Nabi of Allah used to make wudu. Four of these the Nabi of Allah used to make ghusl. So when using water, we should be very, very mindful. As the Nabi of Allah said, do not waste water even bef beside a flowing river. Then we made mention of the dense gardens. And I made mention that if there is a garden that is covered and the rain falls, it will be deprived of water and it will not grow, it will not become lush green. Likewise, there's a spiritual rain, the wahi, the kalam of Allah Almighty. If we place a covering of sin, vice, negligence, heedlessness, then we will come out dry and we will not grow from strength to strength. So we need to remove all these veils, all these coverings and allow the spiritual rain to drench us so we can become lush green in terms of spirituality. And the last verse that we could not complete is that there is a fixed day for judgment. Inshallah, we will speak about this verse in the next lesson. Allah Rabbul Izzat grant all of us complete hidayah. Allah guide us every step of our journey. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. بحسنه حيانا نور الهدى وفانا